Hello and welcome. The internet and web have many purposes. You are viewing this video as part of the RealPython website, and this website has a visual user interface that you can access and interact with. But some web applications do not have a user interface. Instead, they merely serve data or perform actions to create and modify data. Such web applications are called APIs or Application Programming Interfaces. Web APIs are useful for making your application's data accessible to other applications. There are many ways to create a web API with Python. In this course, you will learn about a relative newcomer to the field, FastAPI. If you are a Python developer on a project that does not have a significant investment in Django or another web framework, you should consider using FastAPI instead. Before beginning this course, you should know a few things about Python and web development, including how the basics of HTTP work, how a JSON document is structured, and it would help to know about Python virtual environments. For this course, I'll be using Python 3.9. However, versions of Python back to 3.6 are supported as of this recording. I'll also be using Visual Studio Code as my editor. For Python support inside of VS Code, I've installed the Python extension. Finally, I'll be using a Python package called HTTPIE as a command line application to help test the APIs that we build. You don't have to have the same setup as me to use FastAPI, but if you want to follow along with the course, this is how my development environment is set up and configured. In this lesson, you will learn what FastAPI is and how it relates to other web technologies in the Python ecosystem of packages. First, you should know that FastAPI is written with creating REST Web APIs in mind. What is REST? It's an acronym that stands for Representation State Transfer. It was conceived by Roy Felding in the year 2000. A REST API uses HTTP, the same protocol used to deliver the web page that you are viewing this course on. So you don't need any special server platform to host REST APIs. A REST API repurposes the existing HTTP methods to implement the four standard CRUD operations of a database. REST maps the HTTP methods, post, get, put, and delete, to the CRUD functions, create, read, update, and delete, respectively. And it also repurposes HTTP status codes. A REST API is accessed using an HTTP endpoint, conceptually a web address. You are viewing this course on a page hosted on www.realpython.com followed by a path corresponding to the course in question. A REST API does the same thing. So if RealPython hosted a REST API with a list of available courses, it might be accessible at www.realpython.com slash API slash courses. But this would not return HTML to be rendered in a browser. It would return plain text, a JSON document, that could then be consumed by other application. Again, familiarity with JSON is assumed as a prerequisite to follow along. FastAPI makes it easy to create REST Web APIs. It is straightforward and does not include a lot of ceremony that other frameworks burden you with. It's super fast, rivaling other web frameworks such as Node.js and Go. The reduced code you have to write lets you create APIs that have fewer errors while taking less time to develop. And finally, it relies upon standards such as OpenAPI and JSON Schema and the latest Python features like type hinting. It even provides async support, but you don't have to get into the weeds of the Python async IO library. You might be asking, why another framework for APIs? After all, we have the Django REST framework, Flask RESTful, and others. It will become clear after you see the demos, but here are some spoilers. As mentioned before, FastAPI was designed with REST APIs in mind. Django is designed to create information delivery forms over data web applications, not APIs. If you were using Django REST framework, creating an API requires some acrobatics that make it feel as if you are writing a Django web application 
instead of a REST API. The Django REST framework is a Django app and therefore has to follow the Django application model. This isn't to say that it's garbage. In fact, it works very well. But if you don't have an investment in Django already, you may have to learn things that might seem confusing. Before creating a REST API with Fast API, it's a good idea to create a new Python virtual environment. I'm in Visual Studio Code on Windows, but you can follow along on Mac OS or even Linux. Or you can use your own editor. But Visual Studio Code has great Python support. Press Control Backtick to open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code. Create a new directory for the demo project. And then run python -m env to create a new virtual environment. Depending on how Python is installed on your machine, you may be able to invoke Python itself. The dash -m option invokes a module named vinv that will create a new virtual environment in a directory called .env, but you can name it whatever you like. After the virtual environment is finished, open the project directory in Visual Studio, and this can be done by executing this command. In the project directory, Visual Studio will restart. Next, press Control Shift P or Command Shift P on Mac OS to open the command palette. The Python extension provides support for virtual environments with the Python select interpreter command. This will look for Python virtual environments, including those created by Conda, Pipenv, and Poetry, and prompt you to select one. Next, open a new integrated terminal, and VS Code will automatically activate the virtual environment for you. At the command line, install the FastAPI package using pip. Create a new Python file called main.py in the project directory. From the FastAPI module, import the FastAPI class. Next, create an instance of the FastAPI class. This will be the FastAPI app, which you'll run later. Now you need to create a function to handle an HTTP request to the API. Notice that you're returning a dictionary, but recall in the last lesson that data returned from a REST API is usually JSON. If you've worked with the JSON module in the Python standard library, you know that marshalling data between Python dictionaries and JSON objects is a cinch. The two are almost syntactically identical. FastAPI will translate this data from a dictionary to JSON for you and return it in an HTTP response with the appropriate status code, 200 for OK in this case. To map the function to an endpoint, Use the Git decorator from the FastAPI app. The Git decorator accepts a path. Now any request using the Git method or verb to the root of the API will be handled by the root function. One more thing. Recall that FastAPI supports async. That's easy to add. Simply use the async keyword before the def keyword and your function is now async. Because FastAPI supports async, the API needs to be run on a server that supports async using the ASGI protocol. You may have heard of WSGI, or Web Server Gateway Interface. For example, the package for Flask implements a WSGI server you could use to run Flask applications. ASGI is Async Server Gateway Interface, and you can install the Uvicorn package and use it to serve your API. To use Uvicorn to serve your API, you can import it into main.py and invoke the server in the entry point. This would be the only choice if you were using something like REPLit to develop your API. However, it's easier to run it from the command line. This will tell Uvicorn to run an ASGI app named app in the main module. Listen on all IP addresses, on port 8000, and to automatically reload the application if the code changes. If you navigate to http colon slash slash localhost colon 8000 in a browser, 
you'll see the JSON return by the root function. Congratulations, you've created your first REST API using FastAPI. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to use FastAPI's interactive documentation. As mentioned, REST APIs aren't meant to be accessed by a web browser. They are designed to be consumed by other applications. Therefore, it helps to have a client to interact with them during development. And web browsers just aren't up to the task. You could use a tool such as Postman. And if you are already using Postman, there is no reason you can't continue to use it with FastAPI. But FastAPI also includes a special endpoint that lets you interact with APIs. Go to http colon slash slash localhost colon 8000 slash docs. You'll see the Swagger tool. This is a browser-based tool for interacting with and testing REST APIs. FastAPI uses it to provide interactive documentation. Notice that the endpoint you created for the root of the application is listed and it uses the get method. Later in the course, you'll see how to use the post method. Expand the item to see an abundance of information about how to access the endpoint, what data it expects, and what data it returns, and any errors that could occur. It also gives you a way to invoke the endpoint in the browser. Click the Try It Out button. The interface now changes and shows an Execute button. If the endpoint expected any inputs, Swagger would prompt you to provide them, as you'll see later. But this simple endpoint doesn't accept any, so click the Execute button to invoke the endpoint. Scroll down, and you can see the JSON that was returned for the Hello World message by FastAPI. In addition, it returned a 200 OK HTTP status code. And you can see the headers of the response as well. Later in the course, you'll see how Swagger handles errors for parameters and incorrect types. I want to show you one more way to interact with FastAPI from the command line. It's a tool called HTTP IE, and you'll need to leave the FastAPI server running in the background. So open a new terminal in Visual Studio Code by clicking the plus button. Then you can install HTTP IE from the HTTP IE package using pip. The HTTP command will now be available at the command line. Invoke the API using the HTTP command. You can see the JSON that was returned for the Hello World message. And again, the API also returned a 200 status code, which is OK. And some headers since the API currently only responds to GET requests. However, what happens if you try to make a POST request? Try it by adding the HTTP POST method to the HTTP command. As you'll see later in the course, in addition to the GET decorator, there's also a POST decorator. But you haven't used it yet, so the API returns a 405 status code, which means that the method POST is not allowed. Later in the course, you'll see that in addition to the GET decorator, there are POST, PUT, and DELETE decorators. You'll continue to use Swagger and HTTP IE in the rest of the course. In the next lesson, you'll see how to provide input to your REST API endpoints with path parameters.